Hey guys, Dropship Tyler here, and welcome to my channel if this is your first time. This video is video four in a series of videos I am doing on things that I find helpful in Excel for eBay and Amazon sellers. So in this video, we're going to make a pivot table analyzing our PayPal transactions. We can see things like the number of sales for each item ID, the total sales for each item ID, um, some of the chargeback fees we've had, you know, things like that. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and ran this report by doing balance affecting transaction types, date range 1118 to 112718, and we're downloading in a CSV format. So from there, we are going to click download. And it's a big file, so it's downloading as a zip, as you can see. So this is really interesting because of the fact I guess I had so many transactions. It downloaded only until 8.13 in, in one file, and then I guess the other file is the sales from 8.13 going forward. As you can see, I guess it only downloads the first 50,000 transactions. So we'll just keep it easy, and we'll just, we'll just look at the first 50,000 transactions of the year. So what you're going to do when you get this report is you're going to click Control shift and then go over by clicking the right arrow and then control shift down and that's going to highlight the entire data range that we want to work with. From there you're going to go to insert and you're going to click pivot table and now you have the option of choosing a new worksheet or an existing worksheet. Obviously we don't have any other worksheets in here so we're just going to choose a new worksheet. From there it automatically puts the pivot table in A3. I always like creating some space between the pivot table and the borders. And so now we have our pivot table here. That's just something for me. I, I guess it's just a little OCD to create some space to make it look nicer. So we have all of the pivot table fields. What these are are the column headers that were over here. So it's just importing those in and then you can do things with each column like what I'm about to show you. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a filter so we're only getting the items that we, we're only getting the transaction that are sales. So the first is going to be type which is right there. So now you can see all of these different types but it put it into rows. So I don't want to do that. And this is also really good for accounting if you want to see, you know, the amount for each one and all of that, the refunds and, and everything like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this into filters. So all of those now go into here. So now when you select a type of transaction, so let's just do, let's do, I'm actually curious to see how many chargeback fees I've had this year. So now when you do that, you click values. Okay, so I've, I've been charged twenty dollars nine times by paypal for chargeback so i've lost 180 dollars this year on char on chargeback fees but actually this is all this data is all only um you know from 813 or from 1 1 to 813 so yeah we have um 180 dollars there lost so now let's look at how many actual payments i've received on ebay from, and like I said, guys, this is from 1 1 to uh, 8 13, so this isn't everything up to date. So, yeah, I've, had, I've done 1 million, almost 1 million 70,000 of sales. So, now that I've seen my total payments from eBay, I want to break it down and I want to see the gross from the actual items themselves. And I'll go to item ID to be able to do that. I'll put that in the rows. But it's, yeah, it's giving me the format that, you know, it says plus 11. But we can change that formatting to a regular number. So we're going to go to number up here. And then you're just going to take the decimals off by clicking right twice up here to decrease the decimal point. So now that I have the item IDs properly formatted, I want to sort this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click into the one of the cells. And I'm going to sort largest to smallest here. So now you can actually see the items that have made me the most money and I want to see the actual number of sales for these this item rather than uh, a sum so yeah I'm sorry just summarize values by count alright so I want to see how many times they sold in that time period okay so 
like I said, this is only 1-1 one, one to um, 8-13. It looks like there was 192 sales. I'm not sure if that includes multi-quantity sales. As you can see, I have a lot of items that, you know, probably just sold once, twice, once. So next I'm going to look at the buyer's email. And I'm going to see if I have any that are multi like that I've, I've sold to, you know, a, a bunch. Um, if somebody's just has constantly bought from me. So I want to see that again. We're going to values and we're going to change this again to a count. And we're going to sort by largest to smallest. It's a good way to see if, you know, you got someone that's coming to your sales I come into your store a lot. So I got one guy that's bought six items from me, five, four, four, four. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, the majority of them are going to be one, but it is interesting to see who the repeat customers are. Maybe some of these people too are uh, multi-quantity sales. So the interesting thing is once you get this pivot table made, you can actually double click inside of it and you can see what items they bought and what day they bought them. So, you know, obviously this was the same person. Uh, every single time, different dates. He bought it six times in a month and a half period. And it looks to be, it's the same item every single time. So this guy just kept coming back for, for my item. And I, I, it's very interesting. I wonder why he, uh, he kept buying from me and, and I wonder why he stopped. But yeah, he might've been drop shipping from me. Who knows? But yeah, there's a lot of different things you can do with a pivot table. I want to see how much I've paid. I've paid uh, PayPal total. So instead of counted gross, let's look at fees. And actually, we don't even have to do it. We don't even have to do this way. So we can take this guy out from email address if we just want to look at the total. Oh wait, that's in their values. <clears throat> yeah, so it looks like I've paid PayPal $42,000 in that that period. So obviously, you know that I wonder if chargeback fees and fee no, okay, so that's totally separate category. Uh so yeah, 43,855 and then I guess if you do all some refunds or something very interesting maybe paypal paying back for some for a dispute uh not too sure but anyway yeah it looks like if you do all forty two thousand dollars at least at least that much in um paypal fees so far that they've made off of me pretty crazy another cool thing you know you can do if you want to is put your uh your town in there and filters and you can filter out let's just say charlotte for example See everyone who's bought in Charlotte and type let's do eBay auction payment. But I don't want fees. I want gross. Okay, so in my in my city, two thousand I've had two thousand eight hundred and forty two dollars in sales. Um that's pretty cool. So if you want to select multiple, you can select multiple items by checking down here. And then I'll just select all the ones that are, uh, is West New York, New York City? I'll just include it anyway. So I've had $5,725 in, in that city. I wonder what the biggest city is, you know, if, and what's awesome is we can actually, we can actually see that by putting town and city in rows. And instead of, we can get rid of this filter here, select all, and we can sort again like we did before, largest to smallest. And we can see that most of our sales happen in Miami, Brooklyn, Houston, Los Angeles, all the big cities, obviously, you know, the bigger the city, the more sales you're probably going to get. Makes sense, right? So yeah, guys, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with pivot tables. Um, I highly encourage you to get in there and play with it. You'll start understanding stuff better. 
so that's it for pivot tables. Obviously, there's a lot more you can do with pivot tables, but I wanted to touch on some of the basics for you guys. If you're interested in learning more about Excel and how you can use it to kind of analyze your business, then follow the series, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and yeah, guys, see you in the next one. Thanks.